In this video, we'll be talking about Barrett esophagus. So Barrett esophagus is a condition in which squamous epithelium of the esophagus gets converted into the columnar epithelium as an adaptive response towards gastroesophageal reflex. That means when you have uh, GERD or gastroesophageal reflex disorder, that time due to cope up with those gastric acids, the esophageal epithelium, which was squamous in nature, get converted to columnar epithelia. Barrett's esophagus is only known histological precursor of uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma, basically the cancer of the esophagus. So it is treated. It is a reversible pathological situation. But if untreated, it can lead towards cancer. That is why understanding the mechanism is important. It's an example of metaplasia. Metaplasia is one type of cellular adaptive response. So we would try to understand that in a bit more details. So GERD is a problem. Basically, the gastric HCL try to come up from the stomach to the esophagus. And esophagus is not supposed to be exposed to the gastric acid, right? So the squamous epithelia try to cope up with this kind of acid-induced stress by changing themselves into the columnar epithelium. Now, anyway, this is an adaptation response, but it's kind of like a temporary solution. If it is long-term GERD and long-term acid reflux, that can turn into a cancer. So there are different phases. Let's see what happens when the Barrett's esophagus is untreated. So this is how the normal epithelium look like. Barrett's esophagus uh, is marked by the columnar epithelium instead of squamous. It can be reversed to the normal epithelium if the GERD is treated with the proton pump inhibitor or other medications. But if it is untreated, in that condition, it can slowly move to a situation called dysplasia. Dysplasia is kind of like a failed attempt towards a cellular adaptation. And dysplasia is a precursor of cancer development. Eventually, esophageal adenocarcinoma a carcinoma can be developed. So this is the overall sequence. Now let us try to understand what molecular factor can trigger this phenomena. What can change a squamous epithelium into a columnar epithelium? The process by which this transformation happens is known as transdifferentiation. One type of adult tissue or differentiated tissue converted to another type of tissue due to a stress, in this case, the acid stress. So it can be direct or it can be sequential. There could be a transition state in between involved. So there is a transient state which eventually converts into the columnar epithelium. So both uh, models are actually possible and experimentally reported. So overall, what we learned is basically whenever cells undergo injury or stress, in this case, we looked at the acid stress, it would try to adapt to the stress. Metaplasia is one type of adaptation response. If the injury is very serious and stimulus is persistent, then there could be very bad consequences like necrosis or apoptosis. If it is mild, then metaplasia is one of the way by which body can fight back and try to adapt to that stress. So let us talk about the molecular pathway underlying Barrett esophagus. So there are uh, acid exposure. So obviously there are several pro-inflammatory cytokines such as NF-kappa beta, prostaglandin E2, TNF, etc. get upregulated. And all of these pro-inflammatory cytokine lead to change in signaling pathways in the uh, esophageal epithelium. So the not signaling pathway gets down-regulated and a compensatory increase of the hedgehog signaling pathway is seen. This lead to an increase in CDX2 molecule. The CDX2 molecule is really important in this context of uh, Barrett's esophagus. This leads to plethora of changes in the esophageal epithelium. The squamous keratinocytes or the squamous keratins, which are hallmark of uh, squamous epithelia, gets downregulated. Instead, the, epi the uh, kerat cytokeratins, which are present in columnar epithelia, they get upregulated. So in, in term molecularly, the signature is moving towards more columnar epithelium. Also, mucins, which are associated with the columnar epithelium uh, or intestinal epithelium, actually, that gets upregulated. So CDX2 play a central role in terms of the pathology of uh, Barrett's esophagus. 
So this lead to a transformation of squamous epithelium into a columna. So let's talk about the risk factors associated with Barrett's esophagus. Alcohol intake, cigarette smoking, sometimes it has sex bias, so males are more prone. NSAID use, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are good, but they are the prime cause of gastritis also. Obesity could be a risk factor. And the biggest risk factor is the helicobacter pylori infection. So all of these things can actually converge into a Barrett's esophagus situation. So the diagnosis of Barrett esophagus is done by endoscopy. So this is how a roughly normal esophagus would look like in an endoscopy image. And this is how a Barrett esophagus look like. It's pretty uh, kind of like a, a severe form. Sometimes the form is not so severe that is seen in this image. But uh, anyway, a, a, a doctor might ask for a biopsy from a region which looks a bit different. So from that region, microscopic analysis would tell us that whether that is basically Barrett esophagus or not. So histology is more confirmatory com uh, than the endoscopy. Endoscopy is preliminary in this case. So this is how a esophageal epithelium epithelium look like. It's pretty much can we, we can understand this is a squamous epithelium, right? And the Barrett's esophagus would have completely altered morphology. Look how dramatic these two pictures are. So anyway, uh, these images are taken from a, a research paper which is linked in the uh, description below. You can definitely check that uh, systemic review. It would be very important to understand the pathology. Anyway, uh, the Barrett's esophagus, if untreated, can go to dysplastic uh, Barrett's esophagus that you can see here and eventually it can lead to cancer. Now you can look in the esophageal adenocarcinoma carcinoma section. All uh, heterogeneous cell populations are there and they look pretty different and there is no squamous or columnar organization in this case. So anyway, this is how one can understood, uh, understand and basically uh, confirm a Barrett's esophagus. So what we learned so far about Barrett's esophagus is basically the squamous epithelium of the esophagus gets converted into the columnar epithelium, the risk factors we reviewed and we looked at several stages of progression. The worst case outcome is the cancer, but it could be also reversed with proper treatment. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.